Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what I have for you is an update to the XSLT plus .NET framework public preview that we launched back in November. And uh, I've got some nice surprises here for you. So let's go ahead, let's jump in. So this is a follow-up video to that video that I mentioned, uh, video 157. I'll include a link in the description. In that video, I mentioned that there was two fast follow investments, including extension object support, which allows you to bring your BizTalk maps over to Azure Logic App Standard without having to modify them. Previously, we had to write a few little lines of helper code, plus we had to go ahead and add some references to your assembly. That is no longer the case. You should be able to go ahead and move your map over to Logic App Standard without even touching it um, by this additional extension object support, which is great news. The other thing that I mentioned was portal upload. Previously, we had to use Kudo if we wanted to use the portal to upload these assemblies. That is no longer the case. We've got a native experience that allows us to do that. If you're using VS Code, nothing has changed. Uh, from that perspective, you can always have been able to deploy by creating the relevant folder structure, so nothing has changed in that mode as well. So in this video, we're really gonna focus on these two investments. If you're interested in sort of, you know, more context about what why we're doing this, what we're doing, uh, go ahead and check out that previous video. Once again, wanna shout out to Praveen from the engineering team for helping me assemble some of this content. So let's go ahead, let's, let's dive in. All right, so for those of you that may, may be wondering what is an extension object, let's talk just a little bit about that right now. So an extension object is a concept that exists inside a BizTalk server, and the BizTalk runtime will use extension objects in order to load the correct assembly at runtime so that a BizTalk map can call the correct assembly. Now, this is, is mostly an implementation detail uh, inside of BizTalk, but where you actually discover this information is once you go ahead and validate a map. And so in order to use a, a BizTalk map inside of Logic App Standard, we need to validate it so that it'll go ahead and generate the XSLT file underneath the hood for us. And so that's kind of an existing uh, you know, feature capability that happens today. Now below that, you can see that we've got a reference to the extension object XML file is stored in the following location. So when you do validate the map, you get two things. You get the XSLT file, which we need, and we also get the extension object file, which we also now need as well. And this is going to simplify our lives big time. And let's talk a little bit about why. Now, when I recorded the first video, we had, I would call it a little bit of a workaround because we didn't have ex uh, the extension object support at that time. And so this forced us to go ahead and modify our XSLT scripts in order to add these references to the assembly, uh, which is essentially what happens inside of the extension object is we've got a reference to the assembly so we know where we to find it. And so previously we used to have to write a little bit of helper code you can see this local method here that would then go ahead and call a method that exists in that specific um, assembly itself. And uh, so that way to do that is a, is a bit of a workaround in order to um, address the feature or the capability that the extension object provided us. Now, the good news is that we don't have to do this anymore. This is the very good news. And I think this will really accelerate uh, more of the BizTalk migrations. What we've decided to do is we've included a, an optional parameter uh, because if you're not using the .NET, there's, there's no need to, to populate it um, as part of the transform XML action itself. So here we've got XML extension object. And what you do is you open that file that BizTalk generated for you and you just copy and paste the entire file um, into this text box. Now, uh, you know, if you have multiple references, you're going to see a few lines here, but all in all, this is not a very large file. And you can see the contents here. Uh, really, I'm just referencing that contoso.hcm.helper assembly, and we've got my class name, and otherwise, life's pretty good. So nothing too uh, complicated here, but this is what's going to allow us to not need to modify our XSS, XSLT files. Uh, which is a huge plus. 
So um, that's how you will now populate and provide your XML extension object to Logic Apps. So this is cool. Now, the other thing we talked about was portal upload. Now, previously in the, in the prior video, I described a process in which you can go ahead and use Kudo to go ahead and create a new folder structure and then use Kudo to go ahead and upload those assemblies. Now, no, nothing changes if you're using VS Code, but if you are using Portal, then we've got an experience for you where you don't have to go ahead and uh, use Kudo. What you'll now see is under the artifacts area inside of the left nav, we've got an assemblies uh, capability. So you can click on assemblies, then you can go ahead and add, and now you're gonna get a little bit of a browse experience. Now, we do have a drop down here, and in the live demo, I'll explain more of this, but you're gonna see three different options. When we're talking about maps, we wanna make sure that we're using custom assembly.net framework. We also have some other options around like SDKs. And so what you can think about for those is if you are using a built-in connector that requires some sort of underlying assembly or jar, um, then you would wanna select those options. So uh, when SAP uh, comes to Logic App Standard, like you would provide the SAP SDK that is available from their marketplace. Uh, I've previously talked about this with JDBC, but that's another example. If you're gonna use the JDBC connector, uh, you need to provide like that JDBC jar. And so you would choose the appropriate option from the dropdown. Once again, since we are going to be using .NET Framework with our maps, uh, custom assembly .NET Framework is the one we wanna choose. You can go ahead and browse for files, drag and drop, click the upload files, and then you'll see them show up uh, in this experience here. And you'll also see the type so that you can differentiate between SDKs and your own custom libraries. Now, another thing uh, that's still in play is uh, enabling this feature flag. At some point, this will automatically be there. So it's one of those things where just look within your app settings, and if you don't have it, do add this. Uh, we do need to enable the multi-language worker. Uh, this is a key component in being able to load your .NET Framework assemblies. If you don't do this, this will not work. Um, over time, this will be a default setting, but uh, for now, just double check. If you don't have it, go ahead and make sure you add it. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick demo. I've got a map here. It's not overly complex. That's not the point. Um, the point here is, is showing the .NET Framework capabilities. And so what I've got here is a scripting functoid and as part of that scripting functoid, I reach out to a .NET Framework assembly, and I can go ahead and just do some string manipulation essentially itself. And so that's the scenario that we're gonna go through here today. All right, so I've got a Logic App here, Logic App Standard, naturally. And the first thing we're gonna double check is our configuration, our app settings configuration. And we wanna make sure that we do have that feature flag enabled. And so if we come down and look for Azure Web Jobs feature flags and we click this value, enable multi-language worker, uh, we do have it, which is great. We, that is a prerequisite for all of this to go ahead and work. Now let's start off with assemblies. So we go to assemblies here and what we can go ahead and do is click on the add button and then we have this browse experience. And so what I can see here is those three options that I discussed previously. We've got the SDKs, so .NET Framework, like when you get to doing SAP, that is the one that you would use. Java, you know, the JDBC example I discussed earlier. And then here we want to use custom assembly .NET Framework. And so what I can now go ahead and do is grab my assembly from my folder here, my file system, and simply just go ahead and drag and upload it by clicking the Upload Files button. Then uh, just give this a moment to complete. We can see that it's now done uh, by the green line. And if we go ahead and just X out of here, we will see that we do have our assembly available for us. And we can see that type that we discussed, custom assembly .NET framework. So that's a prerequisite. Now, in terms of the maps, go ahead and, and upload our map just like we used to. Uh, so nothing's changed from that perspective. Inside of my XSLT file here, let's just open it just to show you that I have not modified this. This came directly from BizTalk. Other than adding the T on the extension name, nothing else has changed. So you can see within here, I don't have any additional assembly references. I don't have any sort of helper code 
that I'm running here in order to, to launch this, uh, this was untouched. And I think this is the big win uh, for folks wanting to take their BizTalk maps into Azure Logic App Standard. So uh, life's good from that perspective. Nothing more to do in this area. Let's just hit up workflows here. And I've got a workflow that already exists. Let's just open up the designer. Okay, we've got an HTTP request. We've got a transform XML action, and then we have a response. We're just going to get the outputted info from the transform XML action and send it back to the caller. Now, in order to find the transform XML, just go into uh, the search here, just type in XML, you'll find it. It is a built-in, uh, which is obviously a benefit for us, transform XML, and there we've got it set up. Now let's look at the pre-configured one. What I've got here is I'm going to use the body content from my trigger. The map source in this case, this is going to be Logic App because we're using the local artifacts folder in order to store these assets. We've got the map name. So this was just, you know, I was able to pull this down and see that information. And here I've got this extension object. And so because this is populated, you don't, it's already there, but otherwise look for it in this dropdown you'll see the ability to enable it, um, XML extension object, and then you'll go ahead and see it. Now, the file that BizTalk generated is exactly what you see here. And so this is the file that BizTalk went ahead and generated for me when I went and validated that map. And you'll just see it's, it's very simple. It's exactly the same as what is in that uh, text box here. So just copy and paste the whole thing and life will be good. So go ahead, save your workflow. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Postman. And here I've got, you know, my sample message that I just used BizTalk to generate. A few things to note, we're going to uh, call our custom assembly and we're going to basically um, add SP dash. That's kind of the logic that exists there. And then we're also, we had that functoid that's going to do to upper on the PCN field, which gets mapped to employee ID. Let's go ahead, click send. And sure enough, we can see that our assembly has been called successfully. Uh, if we head back to our Logic app, let's go check out Run History here. Uh, we can see that it was successful. All right, so thanks for checking out another video on the channel. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Take care.